Welcome to Nuggies. In this short problem, we're going to climb up some stairs, taking either one or two steps at a time until we reach the top. To approach the problem in a generic way, we'll define the top as the nth step. The question we are trying to answer is, how many distinct paths can we take to reach the nth step? Take a moment now to hit that like button, then pause the video if you want to try this on your own before seeing the solution. For this problem, we can attempt to solve it using dynamic programming by going up one step at a time and calculating the result based on our previous results. To approach this problem, let's build a table. At the first step, we only have one way to get there by taking one step. Next, we'll move to the second step. We can arrive at the second step by taking one step from the previous stair or taking two steps from the ground. This gives us a total of two ways to get to the second step. Then we move to the third stair. Again, we can arrive at this step by taking one step from the previous stair this already gives us two ways to arrive here because we had two ways to reach the second stair. We can also arrive at the third stair by taking two steps from the first stair. This adds one more way, giving us a total of three ways to get to the third step. Now we can start to see a pattern emerging. But first, we better take one more step just to be sure. To arrive at the fourth stair, we take one step from the third stair, already giving us three ways. We can also take two steps from the second stair giving us an additional two ways to arrive at the fourth stair. This results in a total of five ways to arrive at the fourth stair. You may recognize this as the Fibonacci sequence if we define the number of ways to get to the zeroth stair as equal to one. This would physically mean that we have one way to not take any steps, which kind of makes sense too. To solve this in Python, we simply iterate over n, keeping track of the previous two steps. So we're gonna define our function fib with an integer input and integer output, here we're essentially defining the values for n equals 0 and n equals 1. Then we iterate over the range of n and update the values each time along the way. Note that this is slightly different from our tabular approach because we only ever need the previous two values. There is no need to build an array to keep track of the results for all n steps. Note that this solution takes advantage of Python's ability to assign multiple values at the same time. This is equivalent to storing one of the values in a temporary variable before making the reassignment. However, this is not the Pythonic way. Let's get that code out of here, get back to the real solution. As a little bonus, let's look at this problem using recursion and memoization. Instead of starting at the bottom and counting the ways you move up the stairs, what if we started at the top stair? We ask, how did we get here? From the top, we can see that we got here by taking either one or two steps from the previous stairs. So all we need to do is add the number of ways to get to the two previous stairs, and that would give us our result. In other words, the number of distinct paths to get to n is the sum of the paths to the previous two stairs. We repeat this process all the way till we get to the bottom where we have the base case. So if n is less than two, just return one. This takes into account that we have one way to get to n equals zero. After we have our base case defined, then all we need to do is return the sum of the previous two values. This solution works, however, due to the fact that we keep revisiting the same steps on the way down over and over again, we call this function many, many times for large values of n. One easy solution to this is called memoization, where we store the output of the function for each unique set of input calls. This is typically done with a dictionary or a list to store the values. However, in Python, we can easily implement memoization using the cache decorator. The cache decorator can be imported from func tools. Now our recursive solution actually functions efficiently because we do not have to make multiple recursive calls for the same value of n. This lesson has been based on the challenge problem on leak code at the following address. Be sure to head over there and try this problem for yourself. There's a link in the description. If this video helped you, be sure to like the video and leave a comment below. That's it for this challenge problem. Until next time, keep on coding on.